Steel is a traditionally good metric to measure the heat of a flame. It is a commonly used metal that almost everyone has experience with on a daily basis. It is typically used in certain things like fridges, cars, and also buildings, specifically in the form of steel beams. Now, steel beams are relatively hard to melt due to their overall size and the melting point of steel being 1510 degrees Celsius. It is for this reason that they are often used as a benchmark in order to determine how hot a flame exactly is. For instance, steel's been used as a benchmark when testing to see how hot a certain fuel burns, or in the case of testing out building safety in the case of a structure fire. Now, Konosuba as a concept has existed since 2012, and it's been an anime since 2017. But we still have no concrete answer on how hot Megumin's explosions are actually supposed to be. It is for this reason that I will now be answering the question of whether Megumin could melt steel beams. There are multiple ways to determine how hot a particular fire is. You could check the temperature of the flame using a thermometer, check the color of the flame as the color of the fire correlates to the amount of heat it produces, or you could check to see if a mushroom cloud is generated from the heat. Now, when determining which method would be best for us to use, we must consider Consider the fact that Megumin is in fact in an anime, so it is pretty much impossible for us to use a thermometer in order to figure out how hot her explosions really are. While we could check the colors of the flames, doing so would be highly unnecessary due to the fact that Megumin's explosions do in fact create a visible mushroom cloud. The fact that her explosions create a mushroom cloud is important due to the fact that the association of of an explosion with a mushroom cloud is directly related to the amount of heat produced inside of that explosion. The reason that mushroom clouds occur is due to how the superheating of gases creates a bubble of gas after an explosion that is particularly hot. While this is commonly believed to only occur in nuclear and thermonuclear explosions, the reality here is that any explosion can produce produce a mushroom cloud, assuming that it is hot enough. This is corroborated by this painting from 1782 of a mushroom cloud occurring during a battle. Now, we can get a general estimate of how hot Megumin's explosions are by comparing her explosions to various explosions that have occurred in the past. Megumin's explosions are extremely large when put to scale with her surroundings. At the very least, I would say that her explosions are on par with that of the 1917 Halifax explosion. In fact, they could even rival some early nuclear detonations. Both the Halifax explosion and early nuclear bombs produced mushroom clouds while being very well documented. Thus, we can obtain a range of temperatures that we can reasonably expect to see from Megumin's explosions. On the low side of the spectrum, we have the Halifax explosion with a temperature of 5000 degrees Celsius. On the high end, we have nuclear detonations with a temperature of 100,000 degrees Celsius. It is pretty safe to assume that Megumin's explosion falls somewhere between the two. Comparing these results to the melting point of steel from earlier at 1510 degrees Celsius, it is clear that Megumin's explosions have more than enough heat to melt steel. In fact, the force of the explosion is likely more than enough in order to not only melt the steel, but to completely obliterate it as well. Now that we have proven that Megumin can in fact melt steel beams, it is about time that I answered the true question that is on everybody's minds. The question that George Bush never expected anyone to ask. That question is, of course, could Megumin 
have done 9-11. Proving whether or not someone did 9-11 is actually a relatively difficult thing to do, as there are numerous factors that must be considered. The main factors that we will be discussing is whether Megumin is mentally capable of doing 9-11 and whether she is physically capable of doing it as well. To start off with, it is unlikely that Megumin is mentally prepared to commit 9-11. As I proved in an earlier video of mine, Megumin is no terrorist and does not typically attempt to harm people. Now, with this being said, people can act significantly out of character, so I do not feel that this is reason enough to disqualify Megumin as a candidate here. The second question that we must ask about her mental state is whether Megumin would be willing to reduce the size of her explosions or not. The explosions of 9-11 were relatively small in comparison to the explosions that Megumin typically lets out. While Megumin is shown to prefer letting out the largest explosion she can possibly produce, the fact that she has a skill tree that can be upgraded shows that she is capable of producing smaller explosions. While very unlikely, it is not unreasonable to assume that Megumin would be able to overcome her love of massive explosions in favor of smaller ones in order to accomplish an important task if she sets her mind to it. Now that we have proven that Megumin is in fact mentally capable of doing 9-11, we must now ask whether she is physically capable of doing it. Letting off a projectile that is aimed at a particular building inside of New York City can be difficult, as the density of buildings could potentially block your view. With that being said, the Twin Towers were, at the time, the second tallest buildings in North America. Thus, they could easily be seen from much of lower Manhattan, in addition to being seen across the harbor in Staten Island and in Brooklyn. Therefore, Megumin had more than enough vantage points to shoot at the towers. With that being said, there was more to 9-11 than just the attacks at the Twin Towers. There was of course also an attack on the Pentagon and an attack on a field in Pennsylvania. This may at first seem to be a discrepancy in the narrative I am creating, however, this can also be easily explained away. Since Megumin is a member of the Crimson Demons, she would have direct access to other people at her same level of magic skill thus making it possible for them to team up and pull off such a coordinated effort. Next, we must answer the question of how they would enter the real world from the Isekai world. Since Megumin has access to Aqua, the goddess that sent Kazuma into the Isekai world, it is safe to assume that she could also send Megumin into the real world or be able to contact someone that has the power to do so. There is also the problem of Megumin's age not fitting within the time frame of when 9-11 occurred. Since Megumin is only 15 at the start of the series, that should make her only around 3 years old in 2001. But what if I told you that this series did not actually occur at the same time that it was released, but rather actually occurred in 2001? This may initially seem hard to believe, but I have proof to back this theory up. In the few scenes that we see of our world before Kaz gets isekai There are two scenes that will help us figure out what year we are in. The first one is the scene with Kazuma's computer, and the second is the shot of the girl looking at her phone as she walks. To begin, the most modern looking item in Kazuma's room is his computer, specifically the widescreen LCD monitors that he has. While 4-3 aspect ratio CRT screens were certainly more common in 2001 than LCDs were, that is not to say that they didn't exist. In fact, it was easy to find widescreen LCD screens by 1999, with Apple releasing their iconic cinema display in late December of the same year. Kazuma's monitor appear more similar to these early 2000s LCDs than the monitors that were popular by 2012, as Kazuma's monitors are thick and have large bezels. Based on what we are shown here, it is reasonable to say that this scene takes place in 2000 or 2001. Next, we have the scene where the girl is walking 
with what is presumably a cell phone. By 2001, flip phones were not yet popularized, with most cell phones looking like small bricks. While the girl could be holding a cell phone is a bit too big for the cell phones of the time. This leads me to believe that the girl is actually using a PDA, which were incredibly popular during this period in time. And with that, we now have the proper time frame for Megumin to have committed the attacks. The last thing that we must address is how Megumin appears to know nothing about the human world when it is referenced. For example, Megumin does not realize that the cat girl statue they find at the Crimson Demon's village is actually from the human world. While it may initially appear that this disproves Megumin's ability to have done 9-11, the reality is that it does not make sense for Megumin to draw attention to the fact that she could be planning such an attack in a world that she is not even supposed to know about. Doing so would compromise her plan, and thus she had a vested interest in pretending like she knew nothing of the real world. So it is safe to assume that Megumin actually did know about the real world, and instead she was just pretending. And there we have it, complete and undeniable proof that frankly cannot be ignored any longer. It would appear as though Megumin truly was the mastermind behind 9-11 all along. I call upon none other than George Bush himself to finally give us the explanation of the truth that we all deserve.